Again, with God's people, and to enjoy the fellowship once more of the company of the saints. And uh, so I do appreciate him tonight, and I do love him, and to know that we have the fellowship of God's family uh, again and coming together, hoping that we can work together, hoping that we can stay together, hoping that we will see the Lord together. Amen. Hope is the ingredient that causes the church to go on and on and on and on. Uh, it is not a momentary, spontaneous, energy that keeps the church. It is uh, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. And uh, then uh, we know that uh, Paul said in Hebrews 12, he said, uh, wherefore seeing then we are encompassed about so great a cloud of witness, and us lay aside every weight in these sin, doth so easily beset us, and we're to run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author, finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him despised, uh, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God in his mediator's position of the high priest. And he said, wherefore consider him, that's the next verse, but consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, consider him, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. For you have not yet, next verse, for you have not yet resisted unto blood in striving against sin. Now this is just showing the comparison of how trivial, we use the word sacrifice. I don't think we make a sacrifice. Uh, we use the word uh, uh, that we're sacrificing. God is requiring of us. I think we're out of line with that. I don't think that any of us have yet shown that which Christ showed. Amen. We have not done that which Christ did. Amen. And neither will we do that because we're not expected to do that, but we are expected to consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. and. Uh, the work of God is so vast, the incredible journey of the church from Abel's altar till now is one of intrigue and <coughs> bewilderment, confusion, hope, passion, and struggle. The incredible journey of the church. Now, the church consisted of one person in the day of Abel, that was Abel. And uh, just like the kingdom of God consisted of one man in the days of Christ, and that was Christ. He was the kingdom of God. They, he said, let no man say that, that lo, here is the kingdom and there is the kingdom. He said, because uh, he dwelleth among you. He is among you. Christ was the kingdom of God among them. And it was hard for them to see that, hard for them to know that. Um, we as Christians, trying to find out who we are, what we are, where we are, and then identify ourselves 
in a world where people are ungodly, unholy, immoral, unclean, and are deceitful, treacherous, wicked, and a low down. And Christians are trying to show themselves in a world like that, in a world where we're told to let our light shine. But I doubt we do that much of the time. I don't think the church does that much of the time. I'm not critical. I'm not overly critical. I don't know that the ministry does that much of the time. But we are commanded of God. That's our goal. That's our hope. That's what we strive for. Uh, that we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. And he said, um, so, but so neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but they light it and set it out that it may show uh, the light wherever you are. And there, there are people that are touching God in this hour. There's people by the thousands and millions across the planet Earth that are having a realistic experience with Christ, finding callings, <coughs> finding a close connection, becoming prayer warriors, changing their lives, young couples, house, young households, some becoming missionary minded, some becoming um, called of God. Uh, you never sing us uh, one song um, without you sing all the verses. Uh, sing all the verses if you sing a song. And uh, we can sing a song that shows the incompetence and the unfaithfulness and the uh, triviality of the church acting like children, playing like children in the marketplace. I piped to you, but you didn't dance. I mourned for you, but you didn't weep little children playing in the marketplace. That's what the church is. It's a playhouse. It's, it's a nursery. And in other times, don't sing that song, though, without singing the next verse of that song. And the next verse of that song is that the Lord has always had and will always have a people who will serve him and loving and giving their obedience and giving their faithfulness and give their lives. The Bible said they love, these are they which love not their lives unto the death. See, there are people like that and, and, and they're in the world um, and they're not all just here in this church and they're not all in the church down the street the church down the street after that. They're not all in the church across the way. But there are people that are being dealt with of God. That's the second verse to the song. See, because if you sing only one verse of the song of the church right now, you can let yourself get very tired, very weary, very disgusted, and you'll throw up your hands and go out in the world and say, I'll kick up my heels and have a good time, and God's going to get you for that. God's going to judge you for that. Because no Holy Ghost person or no person that's set under the Word of God, the truth, will go out there and get by with it. Amen. That may be an easy cop-out for some people. I'll just get the church out the book. I'll just go out there and find me a place. I'll, I'll be appreciated out there. I'm not appreciated in here. But I'll, I, you know, no you won't. Because God will judge you. Because if you've ever sat under the truth, and you've ever listened to the Word of God, and you've ever heard a man of God with authority, and there's a difference in men of God that teach with authority and those that teach with no authority. Because like Jesus, they said, why, he doesn't teach as the Pharisees does. This man speaks with authority. I guess he had authority. And you and I will never be able to go in the world <laughs> throw up our hands and I'll just stay at home 
and, and I'll do what the world does. But you will, but you'll be judged for it. God will judge you for it. And judgment will come to your house, to your family, to you, after a while. It will come. Because God makes us accountable. One time we come to Him. One time we hear the truth. One time we know the Word of God. And we know the truth. God makes us accountable. Yeah. And uh, the scripture said, but every man must stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds done in his body. So the incredible journey of the church uh, has two verses to it. It has people that are touched of God that are anointed of God, that seek knowledge, that want more knowledge, understanding, um, and they're hungry. That's why Jesus said, blessed are the hungry, uh, for they, uh, they that hunger, that's they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fed, or filled. They'll, they'll be fed. He uh, said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. See, there's nothing that I can do to bless God's people that I will not be rewarded for. Amen. Now, if I curse God's people, I'll be rewarded for that too. I'll be rewarded for that too, but it's a different reward. But if I bless God's people, I'll be blessed. Because Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, so God uh, sees the hearts of his people. And the hearts of God's people, despite all the calamity, despite all of the times we live in, and we are not going to see a better day. Hear this prophet of God. You're this man of God. Amen. You may think, and the politicians may think, that they're going to bring the United States out of the chaos it's in. There's not a man in Washington. There's not a man in any house, White House, Red House, Yellow House, or whatever, that is going to rescue this nation from the spin it's in right now. Because America has sinned before God. The immoral lifestyle of America, the, the, the nation of America that has allowed the sins to overtake it and living like they are, paying little attention to God, giving themselves over to the world, they will be judged for that. Because the Bible said, the nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. So uh, that promise is true. That word of God is true. So where is the blessing then that Christians can sing that second verse of the song of Moses and the Lamb? It's in this. It's like, uh, and you have to watch, have to be encouraged. David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know we're living in that time right now when you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. If you look around for somebody to encourage you sometimes, there's not a single person to encourage you. That's right. That's right. There's not one. So you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. And and realize that that God is still God. Christ is still Christ. The Holy Spirit is still the Holy Spirit. And it pays to serve God. I wouldn't live in this world without a family altar. I wouldn't live in this world, even though my daughter's grown, registered nurse, granddaughter sitting back here tonight, graduate of college and work here herself, but I'm a grandson. I would not live one day without an altar of prayer in my home to cover my children and to pray for my family. I wouldn't live one day without this holy word by my side. 
I wouldn't live one week without worship. Your life gets too busy for worship, you're too busy. If you get too busy to assemble, you're too busy. If you get to where you can't be with the family of God, you're too busy. Because you can't live in this world without a protecting hand, without the hand of God, without the mercy of God, because God is going to bring his people through the fire and through the flood and through the famine and through the destruction and all there is ahead of mankind as he's propelling himself into the chaos of the 21st century. But God is going to deliver him. Just like he delivered the righteous of the past. Just like he kept Edict that walked with God. Just like he uh, kept Moses. Just like he kept Joseph, Jacob, and all those patriarchs. God is going to deliver his people. And there are people that are being touched of God. Uh, they're around us everywhere. God is still dealing with mankind. And that's what you're to encourage yourself in the Lord with. That God has a work, and he's going to do that work. In Ephesians, the first chapter, the tenth verse, he said that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things both in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, in the earth, under the earth. He's going to gather it all together in one, in Christ. And his Christ will be the center of the universe. He'll be the center of worship. He'll be the center of kingship. He will be the all in all of mankind. He isn't tonight, but he will be. That's futuristic. That's a promise to the church. That God is going to gather together all things in Christ, which are in heaven and in earth. When he does this, man will not be too busy then to serve him because he'll be one in Christ. Um, we, you have to encourage yourself in seeing the hand of God. If you look at, just give, just write a blank check for everybody and say, well, I, I'm not seeing very much happen now in my time. I'm not seeing very much happen in my day. Where, where's all of this stuff? Uh, we hear the ministry deal with miracles and signs and wonders and, and we hear uh, them speak of, of the coming of Christ and the glory of it. And we hear them talk about uh, how glorious it is to be a Christian and how wonderful it is to serve God and what a wonderful thing it is uh, to please the Lord and have him bless you in your house. But we're looking at a rather mundane world that responds somewhat to God, but not that much. Responds somewhat to God, but not as much as we think they should. Amen. But go to the, to the other part of that and look around you. Just stop and take everyone and deal with everyone as individuals and look past the person that doesn't seemingly have much relationship with God. Look past the person with a hard spirit or a hard nature. Look past the person with a little mercy in their life. And look around and see the gracious saint and the sweet saint and the sweet child of God and the willing vessel and the humble, broken person. See them. Look at them and see how God still has a people on this earth and that he's dealing with them, he's blessing them, he's encouraging them, he's helping them, and there is still a relationship of God to man on this earth. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. There's still a relationship. Um, they're everywhere. We were in a restaurant uh, last night, uh, and uh, we're down to see Brother Norman, Brother Don Norman, and. Help Sister Dee Dee Foster celebrate her 100th birthday. And uh, 
stop to get a little bite to eat. And, um, and I'm always watchful when I'm in a restaurant because if I can let my light shine, it's there. Why not? Have team congregation. Build in congregation. People that are all around you. Amen. People that may be looking for God. So I'm careful how I conduct myself. Careful how I sound. Careful what kind of character I portray. And um, so we were near the end of the meal and this waitress had been so busy and rushing and it was crowded and I, I wouldn't have wanted her job. And um, people are not courteous now, you know that. People are not, there, some people are very crude in the public, you know that. Amen. Uh, manners are a thing that was yesterday, you know that. Uh, being nice is something that uh, was yesterday, you know that. Uh, and and uh, so we were, we were sitting there and at the end of the meal, uh, I saw her name tag and it was Naomi. And I said, uh, Naomi, uh, you've done a very good job. My wife complimented her also. And um, we really uh, appreciate you. And, um, and she thanked us. And I said, uh, where, where, do you, where do you go to church? She said, well, I was Amish, but I'm not. We were in an Amish restaurant. And she said, I'm majority of people there were Amish faith. And, uh, but she said, but I'm not. I found a new church. And I found a new relationship with the Lord. And she said, uh, I'm involved now in being called to be a missionary. I'm on a one-year program where I'm living with a family. And I'm being trained uh, in my church to go into the mission fields. And uh, I've changed. My whole life has changed. I love the Lord. I love, and she just began to witness right there in that restaurant. <laughs> I love the Lord. You could see the glory of God upon her face, couldn't you? Shining like a, a being in that place. And she said, uh, I, I, I want to give my life to Christ. I intend to sacrifice the rest of my life to Jesus Christ. And I looked at that and I said, you know, uh, that, that's, that's not somebody I know, but that's somebody God knows. Yeah. I said, that's not somebody I know, but that's somebody God knows. Yeah. Praise the Lord. See, because God knoweth them that are His right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the greatest thing the church can do is get out of this box that men have put us in uh, that, that um, God is so concerned about you or I that He isn't working with somebody else. Amen. And that he just has to have us, and there's no one else. But God is a great, big, wonderful, fast God. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that God is a great, big, wonderful, fast God? Praise the name of the Lord. And he's got a great, big work to finish. He's got a great, big work to do. He's going to bring everything in one in Christ. He's going to bring everything in one in Christ in the earth. If you know that's bigger than we can do here in this church, we can't do that. That's bigger than you can do, Brother Zonville in Seaburn. That's bigger than you can do, Brother Tom in Lyons, Georgia. Did you know that that church right now cannot even do that themselves? That's too big a harvest field. There's too much to be done. The church cannot possibly do the job that God has to do to wrap up this end time, this end generation, and so God himself must be working outside of the church, in the church, and with the church to finish the work that he has to do. Because remember, 144,000 Jews are to be sealed in their forehead before the coming of Christ. My, what a job that is in itself. Have we even started on one? Do we even have one? Uh, well, I have one. I have one, thank God I have one in the assembly here. But, but 144,000 Israelites must be sealed in the name of Jesus with the baptism of the Holy Ghost before the coming of Christ to fulfill Revelation 7. And then the house of the Lord 
must be established. The church has to be elevated in the top of the mountains, Isaiah 2 and 2. It shall come to pass in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and exalted above the hills. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say that must come to pass yet. Amen. Come to pass in the last day. Amen. Mountain of the house of the Lord. My brother, the mountain of the house of the Lord is barely visible on the periscope right now. Amen. It needs to be established. Yes. Who's willing to establish? Thank you, Lord. The mountain of the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's a scripture that has to be fulfilled. Amen. You think we can do it as we are? You think we can do it without a mindset change? You think we can do it without looking at things all over again and seeing out of a different vision, a different looking glass? Think there's some different binoculars needed for the church right now? Think there's a different vision that needs to come to all of us right now? Not sad about it. But thank you, Lord, Amen. because I have a privilege to establish the house of the Lord in the top of the mountains Amen. and exalt it above the hills. And then all nations flow into it. Yes. Praise the name yes. of the Lord. And then... Uh, there, needs, there has to be 144,000 members of the bride finished before the coming of Christ. Uh, Revelations 14, there must, be, there must be a number yet made up. How many is made up in the bride of Christ right now? How many is lacking right now? We could take a number, 42,600 uh, and I believe it was 65 uh, came back uh, the remnant to establish uh, the walls of the city in the days of Nehemiah and Ezra. That may be a number or may not. God may have left that number in the scriptures to show us the remnant that is to be making up the bride of Christ in this last day. Amen. Whatever it is, the house of the Lord must be finished. <clears throat> the house of God must be finished. The house of the Lord must be exalted. Yes. The bride made up. Israel sealed. Then there's going to be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And that has to be finished. So the work of the Lord is vast. It's wide. God's dealing with thousands of people. God's dealing with people outside of our vision. And God's dealing with me. And I hope he's dealing with you and I pray he is and I believe he is. But I want to thank God tonight that I have a conscious desire to serve Him and to lift Him up and to praise His name. And I am blessed to be in this place tonight. And I'm going to say thank you, Lord, because with all the knowledge I have, I know God can give me more. With all the desire I have, He can give me more. With all the hope I have, He can give me more. I am not finished. The work is not done. There is vision yet for the church in the time we live in. Let us prepare and let the Lord build the house and put it in the top of the mountains. Praise the name of the Lord. May God bless you. And we're so glad to have everyone here.